Welcome to Barnstable Today. I'm Nick Cortese. The Massachusetts House Ways and Means Committee last week released its fiscal year 2012 budget proposal. Over the past several days on Barnstable This Morning, a number of our guests have offered their opinions and analyses on the House budget. And today we've compiled those comments to give you a comprehensive look at some of the major points of the proposal. We begin with State Representative Demetrius Atzelis, who gave us an overview of how the House coped with the loss of federal stimulus funds and closed a nearly $2 billion state budget gap. Uh, you've lost $1.5 billion in federal stimulus funds from last year. So, I mean, that must have made it tough to get the budget to where it is now. Well, that would have closed the great majority of the gap, probably, what, 80 percent of it. Yeah. And uh, so we had, to, we had to find other ways, and, and the other ways are, are cuts. Um, um, we, have to, we have to make cuts, and people definitely are unhappy. Um, that's for sure. Once they start to gleam over the budget, uh, we'll be getting a lot of phone calls. But, you know, when the revenues aren't there, they're not there. I mean, while revenues are up, uh, estimated for the FY, FY 11 and 12, almost to the point where, we're, where we were back in 2008, you know, they're still down. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's a good thing to, to rein in spending, to get these organizations to consolidate, to work together. Yeah, uh, with a smaller piece of the pie. You know, it's kind of interesting. That, it's kind of interesting, Demetrius. Uh, you say that the revenues are up, and people will probably look at that and say, "Well, why can't you help us out, state legislature?" And uh, you, you take a look at the numbers, and I think that the revenues are up something like seven hundred and fifty million dollars, let's say, uh, exactly. year over year. That's less than a third, or no, just about a third of the overall budget gap that exists. So there's still a lot to make up, even with the increased revenues. Absolutely, and we've seen what happens with the federal government how they spend when they don't have it. And uh, we don't want to be in that, that spot. I mean, we closed the gap by, um, really, by cuts and savings uh, in different initiatives, about a, a billion and a quarter. And, and that still left uh, other ways to get creative. We had a draw down from the stabilization fund of what we call the rainy day fund, yeah. which is now down to about $500 million, from as high as over $2, $2 billion back in 08. Wow. Um, we canceled a rainy day fund transfers of $100 million. Um, to the different uh, uh, space, uh, places, and then uh, different authorities uh, made contributions, um, which means give back monies uh, to the Commonwealth for about $25 million, and that's how we closed the $1.9 billion gap. A notable feature in the House budget proposal is a $65 million cut in local aid to cities and towns. We asked Town Council President Fred Chirigotis about what kind of impact that could make on the town of Barnstable's bottom line. Um, you know, the difficulty is, is that um, year after year, we're dealing with the reduced revenues, but uh, maintaining um, a, a strong fiscal position in the town of Barnstable, which has been increasingly difficult. What what we need to realize is that while we're getting less funding, at the same time we have costs which are which are increasing. I call it exponentially. Healthcare costs continue to rise 10, 11 percent and more yeah. per year, yeah. and fuel costs are just going through the roof. So that be and and, I, and and so realistically, um, we will be doing more with less. Uh, yeah, no question about that. But at, at the same time, uh, I know that as the budgets were being developed here in Barnstable, and they still are being developed for that matter. Uh, but uh, Mark Milne, our director of finance, who we'll talk to a little bit later on in the program, was uh, recommending that we plan for a 10 percent cut in local aid. And this hasn't gotten to that point. And it looks like we're in decent shape, even being extra conservative, Fred. Well, that's exactly right, is that on an annual basis, and I, and I give great credit to the town manager and to uh, Mark Mill in, in how the budget is approached, and it's actually planning for a greater decrease in funding than, than we should see. But at the same time, we're still doing more with less. So, yes, I think that we will maintain a strong financial position, that we will continue to do the, you know, the priorities of the town of Barnstable, um, but at the same time, um, it's not really level funding as, as we're talking about it, you know, what the state's talking about. In reality, what it is is um, it's good planning, it's good financial management, it's making the town financially um, solid, but at the same time doing more with less. As you heard, Finance Director Mark Milne correctly anticipated the cuts to local aid, positioning the town to absorb the blow. Milne also projected a 10% cut in school aid. But, based on the House proposal, it would appear that Chapter 70 funding is going up, not down. 
That's great news for Barnstable Public Schools, according to Milne. Do you have any uh, rough figures for us as to uh, how much money could theoretically come back to the town or as a result of our uh, overly conservative estimate and these numbers now? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's about $700,000. Wow, that's significant. Okay. Yeah, it's what the Chapter 70 is because we're, you know, a 10% cut was about $700,000. they are actually adding about 30000 to it. So it's a little more than 700000 um, is what we're talking about. But, you know, and that would be, with the budgets established already the way they are, um, that would provide us a great deal of flexibility going into the fiscal year 13 budget development because we'd be starting in the good with 700 as opposed to, you know, what we, a negative amount if we used, you know, in the past years, remember a few years ago we used a, a, a great deal of free cash to yes. balance the operating budget, which yes. started you in the hole the next year. So, I mean, this is a huge swing in the right direction. Several local governments are having a difficult time keeping health insurance costs under control, and the House budget aims to give local leaders a tool to save money by allowing co-pays and deductibles to be set unilaterally. State Senator Dan Wolf opposes this measure, believing that it smacks of legislation passed in other states that limit collective bargaining power for public employee unions. If you get plan design equals potential pay cut, if, if, what, if what the uh, municipal officials are given is the right to change the plan design of a health care plan, raise the deductibles, raise the co-pays, raise the maximum out-of-pocket that an employee has, in effect, what they're able to do then is, is, is cut the pay of that employee. And remember, I do believe that we need to take a look at benefits, pension, everything in the public sector. But we need to do that as part of a collective bargaining process for those uh, employees that are, that are uh, protected under collective bargaining and are part of a union. So I agree with you. What do you think the chances are that that, that uh, particular item will make it into the final budget that ends up getting passed? I think that's a great question, and I think it's 50-50 either way. I, I look forward to, uh, to a debate on the Senate side relative to what that's saying. There are some real uh, labor, tenacious labor advocates in the Senate, uh, Steve Tolman, um, you know, among many, who I think uh, agree with your initial statement, which is uh, that really is sort of a Madison or a, or a you know, Wisconsin or a Ohio type of move, which undercuts uh, the, the spirit um, of collective bargaining. The tourism industry powers Cape Cod, and over the course of the past several years, tourism marketing funds from the state have plummeted from $9 million down to this year's House proposal of about $1 million. And according to Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce CEO Wendy Northcross, the lack of state funding is changing the way local and regional chambers do business. The chamber budget um, at its all-time high was about $3 million. Uh, in the last fiscal year and a half, we've had to cut out 33% of that. Most of that was state money. The rest wow. of it's private money, it's, um, we, and we do chase a lot of other grants. Um, we, we're really good at attracting other resources as a regional organization. But, um, but yeah, it was pretty significant. And my board, in its wisdom, told you know, gave us advice three years ago that we want to see a three-year budget with no state money in it. We want to know that this organization can survive with no state money. So, in fact, we shaped that, and in fact, we're working that, that budget. So next year, if there's not even $1 in the state budget, you know, we'll still have some funding to do some things, but our firepower is greatly diminished. And in a destination like Cape Cod, I mean, we're living and dying in our tourism. Our, so many of our jobs are yeah. tied to this, and that's the argument that we're trying to make back up to the state. And they get it. You know, our legislative delegation really gets it. Thank God Sarah Peake is chairwoman of the Tourism Arts and Culture Committee, but there's just no money up there. So our proposition is, yeah, you know, Cape Cod, in good times, we can send over $20 million just in room taxes to Boston, prime the pump a little, and we'll send some more money up there. Next up in the state budgetary process is the release of the Senate's proposal, which should come sometime in May. Now, let's take a look at this week's remaining meetings. Well, that's all for now. I'm Nick Cortese, and we'll see you next time on Barnstable Today.